So you're just starting out in Blender and you want to add some text to an object. Procedural materials are a powerful way to add texture, but what if you want to add a label to a glass bottle, graffiti to a wall, or an inscription to a very precious piece of jewellery? For that you're going to need some custom UVs, and in this video I'll teach you just that. We'll work with a very simple object so you can easily wrap your head around the basics, and you can download this scene file which has a nice camera and lighting setup included, so you can get a stunning final render. The download file does come with this ring model included if you just want to practice UVs and materials, but it's also a very simple object, so let's quickly recreate it. There's a number of ways to create a ring. You could use a polygon torus, or a cylinder, or you could use a curve. Any of these methods will produce perfectly fine results, but using a curve here allows me to show you some extra UV tools, so that's what we'll be using. Create a circle curve. In the object data properties, scroll down until you find the geometry tab and add a small extrusion, around about 0.2. This gives us a nice cylinder shape, but no thickness. We can add that under the bevel tab by adding some depth. Set this to around 0.075. If we turn on the wireframe visibility in the overlays menu, we can see that this is actually a fairly dense geometry. Considering I plan on adding a subdivision modifier to this, this is a little overkill. So I'll lower the resolution on the bevel to 1, and under shape at the top, we can lower this resolution to around about 4. Although these settings have given us what looks like polygons, under the hood this is technically still just a curve. If we go into edit mode you can see we still have access to the original curve data, not the individual faces or vertices. This will still render perfectly fine, but in this state it's very hard to control its UVs, so I'm going to convert this into a polygon object. To do that, right click in the viewport and go to convert to mesh. Visually not much will change, but if we go back into edit mode now, we can see that we do in fact have access to the polygons. The goal of this tutorial is to teach you how to add text to an object, but that doesn't mean that we want to ignore the rest of the material. So let's create a nice gold material as our base to build on. Slide open a new window and switch it over to the shader editor. Switch the viewport to material view and click new to create our new material. This is going to be gold, which is a metal, so crank the metallic all the way up to 1. Now it looks like a silver band, so let's give the base colour an orange tint to make it look more like gold. I'll also lower the roughness to around about 0.2, so we can see the reflections a little better. Now we want to get that elvish inscription on the ring. Create an image texture and open the inscription image provided in the download. If we preview this node with the control, shift and left click shortcut, you probably won't see the text. Technically it is there because this object received some UVs and we converted it to a polygon object, but they're so badly laid out it's very hard to tell. Swap the shader editor over to the UV editor. Then in the viewport, jump into edit mode. You can see the UVs in the UV editor, and if you wiggle them around with the G key, you might be able to see them in the viewport. But we want text on both sides of this object, on the inside and the outside. So these default UVs aren't working for us. The fastest way to create some UVs is to bring up the unwrapping menu by pressing the U shortcut and choosing the cylinder projection. If your UV map has this bend through it, go down to the tool options and change direction to align to object. At first glance this might look like it's worked perfectly, but that's probably because you can't read Elvish. If I swap this script out for something in English, you can see that the text on the inside is actually reversed. Creating the cylinder projection has automatically created some UV seams for us, but they're not displaying in the 3D model yet. Make sure you have all your UVs selected, and under the UV menu find the Seams from Island option. Clicking this will show us where our current UV seam is in the viewport. To allow us to flip this inside text, we need to separate the inside from the outside, and to do that we're going to need another two seams. Select the top middle edge ring using the Control, Shift and left click shortcut, then right click in the viewport and choose Mark Seam. Then pick the bottom middle edge and do the same. Although we can't see any difference just yet, these seams have now separated our UV islands. In the viewport, if I mouse over the inside faces and press the L shortcut, it will select all the faces. But if I go to the tool options down the bottom, I can change the selection to seam, and now it will only select the interior faces. Back in the UV editor, make sure that you are in the face selection mode and press S to scale the UVs. We can constrain this scaling to just the left and the right by pressing the X key. And finally, if we tap negative one, we can perfectly mirror it. Now our text is facing the correct direction. Back in the shader editor, I'll swap our silly text back to the Elvish script and preview the final material. You may want to scale your UVs down on the Y axis just to make them fit into the ring a little bit better. Now our UVs are set up, I'll add a subdivision modifier and set the viewport levels to two to make our ring perfectly smooth. With the UV set up, let's finish the ring material. Start by making a mix color node. We want the same color we used in the principal shader, so mouse over the color and hit Control C to copy it. Then mouse over the color swatch on the mix node and press Control V to paste it. Then set the mix type to multiply and plug the Elvish script into the bottom. Use the factor to determine how dark you want this text to be. 
I also want the text to look like it's been engraved into the ring, so add a bump node and connect the image texture into the height and the normal output into the normal of the material. Adjust the distance so the engraving isn't so deep. I've used a very low value here of 0.001. It's very rare for metal to be perfectly clean and shiny like this, so I'm going to add some variation into the roughness to make it more realistic. Create a noise texture and a color ramp. Connect the noise into the ramp and the ramp into the roughness on the material. I'll increase the detail on the noise texture by upping the scale, detail and roughness values. I'll also add more contrast between the rough and shiny parts by bringing the black and white values closer together on the ramp. This is good, but pure white means maximum roughness, which is a little unrealistic for metal. So I'll lower the white value to a mid-grey to bring back more of that shine. Finally, I want the option to make this text glow like it does in the movies. To do this, add a colour ramp and plug the image texture into it. Then plug the ramp into the emission colour on the material. If we preview the ramp, we can see that the ring is white and the text is black. That means that the ring is technically glowing, but the text isn't. So let's flip the colour ramp to invert those colours. The text is now going to be glowing as it should be, but it's the wrong colour. So I'll copy the colour from this mix node and paste it into the white colour on the ramp. You can now adjust the emission setting on the material to determine how much glow there is. The text is definitely now bright, but it's not really glowing as such. Although it's possible to get a glow effect in the compositor, Cycles doesn't do bloom by default. Eevee, on the other hand, does. And this material will work perfectly fine in Eevee. So switch over render engines if you haven't already, and turn on the bloom effect. Feel free to dial in the settings here, as well as tweaking the amount of emission in your material until you're satisfied with the results. The UVs on this ring object were relatively simple to set up, but in this next video we'll be combining simple UVs, texture painting, procedural textures, and introducing UDIMs to create the shield from Captain America. So if you'd like to take your texturing prowess to the next level, jump on over to that video.